the interviews with Letitia Stock were pretty long, so for those that prefer to watch in parts, we have broken them up for you. The links to the other parts of these videos are in the description below. Thank you. I am Tisha Stout, which is Gannon's stepmother. Uh, you've been a part of the investigation since the very first time. You were the last person to see him. Is that right? Correct. Uh, what, what did you see when you last saw him? Well, I'm not allowed to talk about anything with the case. I would more so be willing to talk about how the community needs to have faith and continue to work together and not make these false accusations, like the things that have been said that I've disappeared from the community. I haven't been there to help, but there's lots of reasons behind that. Uh, reasons like death threats, right? Right. Death threats are one of them. My family's getting lots of death threats. We counted over 20 some death threats already. Um, Two, my husband's ex-wife is living in our home, and of course I'm not coming home to do these things and to help with the family when I was kind of like told I couldn't. Um, and then many other things that happened with the El Paso County Police Department, you know, and in doing the investigation, I was told I wasn't complying. And uh, could I elaborate on that? Please do. Yes, so I asked for an attorney during the interview, uh, and I was denied that by them. I was held because they were blocking the door and I was told I couldn't leave and that if I would have touched them, they would have probably, you know, said I still wasn't complying or said I was, you know, trying to run away or something. But during the interview, I asked several times, could I stop the interview? Could I get an attorney? Could I stop the interview? Could I get an attorney? I was denied. I was told I couldn't get nothing to drink. I couldn't go to the bathroom. I mean, it was continuously that my constitutional rights were violated. Welcome all you couch detectives out there. Join us every week for new cases, and if you're a fan of true crime, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss anything. The absolute best way to support the channel is to subscribe, and if you appreciate what we're doing here, hit that like button, let us know that we're moving in the right direction. Okay, enough rambling, let's get into it. If you are unfamiliar with this case, Letitia Stock was the last person to see her stepson, 11-year-old Gannon Stock, alive. She reported him as a runaway on January 27, 2020, and after weeks of searching, Gannon's body was eventually found in Pace, Florida by bridge workers. He was in a suitcase. Letitia made several different reports to authorities regarding the disappearance of Gannon, including a kidnapping, a bike accident, him running away. In this interview, you will hear a few of those stories out of her mouth. This is the second interrogation of Letitia Stauk, conducted by Agent Jonathan Grusing of the FBI. He traveled all the way to South Carolina to question Letitia on the whereabouts of 11-year-old Gannon Stauk. Again, you will hear some outlandish stories from Letitia. If you missed the first interrogation, all of the parts are linked below. Before we get started, let's have a moment of silence for the victim in this case. So Letitia and John Grusing with the FBI mm -hmm. met you in the mall parking lot. Do you know why you're here? Did they inform you, the officers, of why you're under arrest? I'm under arrest? Yes. For what? For uh, Gannon Stops. Uh, a warrant was issued out of Colorado. Okay, but no, someone could have just called me. We didn't have to have like, a big scene. I would have called you or whoever. Yeah, and apologize for that. Um, because of the nature of the warrant, it being a murder warrant, there's, <laughs> there's and that's what I'd like to talk with you about today. That's why we're not having a cast of thousands here and whatever, mm -hmm. is we would like to get to the bottom of what happened there. Um, I know that a lot of things have gone on with your life, a little bit of how this turns out. Mm -hmm. Okay. But because you were arrested and you're not free to leave, I need you to sign of advice to rights before we can talk. Well, I mean, so I'm getting charged with what now? So you were charged in... Uh, the judge in Colorado Springs signed okay. off. So the way this case worked mm -hmm. was El Paso County got the first, the original case. They didn't have enough manpower to work it. Okay. So they called the FBI. Right. Um, I'm part of the for, the, for the FBI, I'm an extension of the profiling unit, mm -hmm. and I came in and assisted. And I've been helping for about the last three weeks. Okay. So our evidence response team, you've probably seen that on the news, has been doing some searches, et cetera. And then other FBI agents have been writing warrants. Okay. Uh, so a lot of warrants have been written. We've gone through the court. El Paso Sheriff's Office and FBI have worked together. Okay. And we found enough 
you call it probable cause okay. uh, for a warrant to be issued. So that's why you're here today. Okay, warrant for what then? It was for the murder. What of murder? Gannon, Gannon Stout. So Gannon is murdered. That's what the evidence shows. Okay. And I'm happy to share with you evidence, but we can't have a conversation unless you're advised of your rights. Okay, what are my rights? So this is an advice of rights form. I'll fill it out at the top. And you don't have to answer any question. Oh, I am. Okay. So I'm not going to force you to answer anything. If you want this interview to be done, it's done. So we are in South Carolina. So I'd like you to initial these as we go through them. Uh, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in court. You have the right to talk to a lawyer for advice before we ask you any questions. You have the right to have a lawyer with you during questioning. If you cannot afford a lawyer, one will be appointed for you before questioning if you wish. And if you decide to answer questions that a lawyer present, you have the right to stop answering at any time. I'm not going to force you to say anything. Okay, so I had already, like, had reached an attorney, but all the information is in my phone, so... Um, so it, it's up to you. I'm not going to force you to say I anything. mean, if you don't I can to talk to you, but, I mean... See, the last time I asked for an attorney talking to them, I wasn't allowed that after I asked. That's not how this so is going to go. This would be yeah, a conversation. You have more integrity being with the FBI that you would do that. I've got a family to protect, okay, so I'm so not going to violate any I don't mind so. doing that at all. Um, but you, at, at any point, I would like to call my attorney yes, if I feel like. Is that okay? That is okay. Okay. So can I write that in somewhere? or? Well, that's this one right here. If you decide to answer any questions from a lawyer present, you have the right to stop at any okay. time. Okay. So, and if you need food, water, whatever else, this, is, this is not, we're not going to have people with guns standing outside trying to intimidate you. I want this to be your statement okay. and our conversation. Okay. So, I was thinking of a lot of things to say to you today because I've been helping, I've been involved. Right. Um, I've unfortunately worked a lot of missing kids mm -hmm. cases. That's why they called me to do this. Okay. Um, a lot of time with Mark, who was the dad. Dylan, mm -hmm. who actually was in Colorado Springs with mom, mm -hmm. went to go see dad. This was in November of 2012. Right. And uh, then he disappeared. So it's a lot like what happened here. Right. Uh, what I think happened with Mark is uh, friends, mm -hmm. and Mark wouldn't let him go. Okay. And I think Mark got upset. I think Dylan did some things that irritated Mark. I think there was just a punch in the face right. sort of thing. Right. And I think things went downhill from there. Well, um, and um, I'm not I'm not saying that's I just what happened to say with to you, you. I can help you because what you're charging me with is not, or whoever, is not the case. Okay. Gannon is alive. Okay, and I can help you. Okay, great. But see, here's the problem. When I reached out to people about getting help, I said, hey, I need someone who's going to help me to help you guys. I couldn't get that from anyone at we all. We are happy to help you. Okay, so I understand you might say you have, like, whatever evidence that you might say you have, but that is not a case. I did not hurt my child, Okay. Need more assistance besides just FBI. You're probably going to need some DEA. Probably need a lot, a lot of help. Okay? Well, I'm happy to get whatever help. Okay. How do you know? But I can't help you unless people are willing to help me. And I did offer every opportunity to sit down and talk with not only my husband, but with Landon to try to come up with the best thing to do it. I really did. And I've been begging every single day, please, please, please don't say this. Okay. You, I know you're an expert in your field, okay? I know you may say you have whatever evidence you have, but it's just not true, okay? It's not. It's not true that Gannon's dead? I'm not going to sit here and say 100%. I can tell you that there's really things that wouldn't have occurred that I can help you guys with to know that. And it leads back to some things just being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Okay, that's, that's the truth. Okay. That is the very truth. And every day that went by, I had to do nothing but not only protect myself, but protect my family in this, protect other people in this. And it's just, that's just what it's been. 
So I think our biggest problem is what happened at the house then. At, at the house? Yes. Well, there's nothing that would have happened at the house that has anything to do with what, I, what I'm talking about at all. That has nothing to do with anything. Because you guys have, like, clearly put out this information about Ian not coming home and then this and that and the other. And I get, like I said, you're experts. I get people with forensics are experts. I understand that. But it's just not the truth. It's just not the truth. And until I know that I, I got to get help from some people other than someone just having me in a room. You got to get help to do what? I got to get help to give everyone what they need because I'm gonna need my mom protected. Okay, I'm gonna need my brother and sister protected, and most importantly, I'm gonna need Harley protected. And on that same note, I'm also gonna need other people in Colorado protected. And see, people say FBI can offer that protection. I can. How? How? If it involves it, an 11 year, mean, if it involves finding an 11 year old, then we can. And it means that we can have new identities. It does. Yeah. I've had to do that before. For, we call it an informant, but we can do it for, we can do do it for the general public. People? Who else would you trust? I don't know at this point, sir. I don't know. There's nothing that happened at any house, nothing that happened at any house that would have hurt, harmed, murdered, done anything to anyone. Okay? Wrong place, wrong time. You were in the wrong place, or Gannon was? I was. What about Gannon? We, we all were in the wrong place. My, even my family was in the wrong place in our time. Even Lena, even Harley. Okay? There's all of us in the wrong place at the wrong time. And so, I swear to you on that. So. But I got to get Just like you have trust issues, let me tell you where I am. Okay. So, so I'm with the FBI. We're. When a child goes missing, if they're under age, right. then we can get involved, and it's, it can be even a kidnapping. So if, if Gannon is moved from one point to another without right. his, you know, will, then it's a child kidnapping. Right. And so that's what we're working this as. And with me as a federal employee, mm -hmm. uh, with me working a federal case, because right now it's filed with the district attorney, right. but the U.S. attorney could file it as well. Okay. Does that make sense? What do you mean? The U.S. Can attorney is the federal Okay. Um, prosecutors. Gotcha. Right now it's on the state. When you're talking to me, uh, we are recording this for your integrity and mine. Right. But if you'd rather not say something, I mean, if I would rather you just say I don't want to answer it instead of telling me something that's not true. Okay. Because there's something called false statements, which is a thousand, it's U.S. Code 1001, to where if you lie to us during an investigation, that can okay. be a year of prison time. Right. I got so you. that's why I said on this last one, if you want to not answer a question, I'm not going to push you. Okay. Okay. So, so with these people, you know, taking Gannon or whatever else, if it's not true, just say I'd rather not answer that. Okay. Because we're different than your local detectives and whatever else. It's not a felony to lie to them. Okay. Okay. So, my goal though is to find Gannon. Right. And if you need protection, if there truly is someone out there, I we can that. provide that. That's not me. Like. Happened though. I will need you to explain what happened from that night. Which night? The night that he disappeared. Because I've heard, I've read, I've looked at all the news stories. I've, um, we have been listening to your phone for the okay. last month. That probably doesn't surprise you. Okay. We're listening to other people's phones as well, trying to find this kid. Okay. And we know from the internet and whatever else, there's a lot of stories out mm -hmm. there. So if someone truly took Gannon though. We need to know the real story because you put out quite a different, quite a few different stories. I put out to who? To you. Well, we heard a lot of the stories to Al. To Albert? Mm-hmm. You mean like talking to him? Oh, okay. So let me just, just let me just explain that to you. And you might think that's like super, like I'm not going to judge you here. The whatever. To him was I. The reason I already knew someone was listening to him, mm -hmm. but because of him not. Ever, like being like supportive and I tried originally to talk to him when he first got there that was the only reason I said those things to him was just because I was out of anger and out of like her and not being able to have like support it was nothing to do with like like I'm sitting here going to tell you these things that was just 
anger, stupidity, testing. And I already knew, like, I even, if you heard it, you heard me say a lot of times, I know people are listening because I know at the same time that someone called every time I could hear people. Right. I knew that. So me saying those things to him was just being just, what what is the word you want to call it? Selfish or facetious or whatever you want to call it. Just because that was, I was, I was hurt by him not wanting to work together to figure this out. Because I did have, like, originally initial different thoughts on certain things, and that was me trying to, like, basically read him and try to figure the situations out. So I understand that you may have heard those or whatever you may have heard, and that's okay because that totally was not it, well, That was not me trying to right. be. That was just being stupid to him. So I have a question for you in regards to that. Yeah. Do, were you of sound mind? I mean, what, did you have are – are you undergoing any treatment for anxiety or any – depression or anything like that right now? Or? I mean, like, you mean, like, I don't, I mean, I've had anxiety since I was, like, 16, 17-ish, okay. maybe, but, like, as far as, like, um, undergoing, like, any kind of special treatment or, you know, like, sometimes I might have to take, like, a little razapram or, or something like that. Right. But um, I didn't see, like, counselors or, like, anything for any kind of, like, depression or and then plus two, like right now, well, if, I mean, I'm sure if you already got medical records, I'm, our, I'm eight weeks pregnant, so I can't take any kind of, okay. like, uh, I, I, I mean, I wish I could because then it would help a lot with the anxiety, but right. I can't. Yeah. Okay. But so I, you were of sound mind when you were talking to Al. You were just, you were upset with him and upset with the situation of him not being by your side through this whole thing. Right, and but then at the same time, like I have to sit back and think that you know, in a person's brain, you don't you hear a hundred different things, you do get like, miscombobulated and just try to like do whatever. And I just wanted him to know because he knows. Like I've been I've been taking care of our kids like for so long while he was gone and their mom was gone, and I'm not here to bash either one of them. I just they had a lot of different separate situations going on that I've mm-hmm. always taken care of the kids. And so there's been times I've protected them from so many people. You and you know. basically had to raise them on your own because he was gone a lot. Well, he was gone a lot, and Mom was doing whatever she was doing, you know. So with that, like, I've had to step in and protect them a lot so mm-hmm. many times. What kind of dad would you say Al was to Gannon or is to Gannon? Oh, he's a good dad. Like, I mean, as far as, like, being like there for him and like you know how can I say it like if he says hey I want to go do something Albert works a lot so he's tired and his hours are like kind of you know up in the air here and there but for the most part he like is always trying to make sure he put you know like the kids military first and always will be and that's the mindset and then did you go into the marriage knowing that that military was first well I grew up like knowing that my stepdad was here Actually, that's why I was looking at that guy's name. But my stepdad was here um, growing up in the Air Force Base. So I lived on, like, a lot of Air Force bases and things like that. So, mm-hmm. like, I maybe didn't understand it from parent perspective. I mean, I'm sorry, spouse perspective, like my mom's perspective. Right. But I did understand it from, like, a child perspective. But the thing about it was is Albert didn't have to, like, go be deployed or, or anything like that. It was mostly, like, work through the night type thing. So it was like we were blessed in that way of not having to, you know, like, mm-hmm. have to see him go overseas or, or something like that. So right. That was a good part. And you guys have been married six years, five years? Five years. Five yeah. years. And you yeah. came to the marriage with Harley. Right. Yeah. And then Elaine is the youngest. Right. Okay. Right. Um, and then we had, like, Maybe, I think four or five want to, like, kind of midterm miscarriages because we always try to, like, have kids. And I don't know, like, something must have happened, like, when I get to a certain point. So we would have had more kids. Right. But, yeah. Do you think Al was faithful to you? Was he cheating on you? Um, I don't, like, I never, we never had, like, any conversations until, like, of course, mad, like, recently. But, like, prior to that, we never had, like, a, um, like buses or it might be something like Albert type person when he got work he just liked to come home he wasn't like uh oh I'm gonna go do this with people he just wasn't that type of person and that was 
And that was the good part because he wasn't. You know, like, not saying you can't. Like, I know, sure, you might say if a football game's on, you might want to go over and watch, you know, watch one of your friends. Right. But usually, for the most part, we'd do it, like, do it together or go over there and do something together. But it was never really, like, having our own people that we did things with and also kind of together. So we never, like, had issues of anything like that. Most of the time, the issues that we always had was I never wanted the kids to ever come back here a lot of times during, like, their breaks and we would get like I don't know, arguments about it but he would always say well I have to I'm obligated you know to do these things so so you don't think he was cheating on you prior to this whole thing going on with Canada um or did you suspect or no? that Albert was cheating on me mm-hmm. um, no the I mean there's been times in the past where I've saw that he's talked to other women you know like on messages and things like that but then he's also like you guys have my phone in the past you would have saw that he's always apologized for you know like those things like yeah. saying were you guys considering divorce you know you and albert i didn't know anything about any kind of divorce like i know like we've used the term loosely you know because there was a lot of stress having to deal with um like the situation we're planned in there was a lot of stress because like, we fought so hard and so long to get kids mm-hmm. to, like, a safe, you know, uh, situation. So it was very hard to, like, you read someone and they're so emotionally, like, upset about the kids not being with us and we not being able to protect them that it was kind of hard. It took a lot, you know, told throughout that time frame of, like, Alaska. I'm sure you know about the right. time in Alaska and things like that. So during that time in Alaska and stuff, like that, it was very hard to to like have to see him be so upset from so many miles away. And, mm-hmm. You know, we get calls that kids didn't have a place to stay. We get calls that there was guns in the back of their car and people were being arrested. And you know, so that took its toll in the terms of like figuring we should not have to like go through these things. Right. But then once like we got to Colorado, um, you know, we all could be in like one place. And then it was, like, kind of, first it was, like, kind of hard because you, you've been, you know, like, back and forth to Alaska for so long. Because, you know, I, if you know the background, I had the kids here for their school year, for, right. for Gannon and Lena. So it was Lena's, was the first grade year? And again, the fourth grade year? Yeah. So they would have went to school here in Little Beach. So I had them here with us then. Um, and so still with that, it was us, like, being part, going back and forth, traveling mm-hmm. on holidays and right. things like that. So that would have been the most. You know, difficult time. Like, so when I got, we got to Colorado, it was just like, okay, we're here. You know, we are you know, doing things together. And we said stupid things to each other. Like, I don't even want to say on camera, but, um, but like the things that we could do to be like, okay, we'll forget all this. Or if you do this, we'll do it and forget all this. Right. But it's stupid, silly stuff, you know, mm-hmm. nothing that we would have been. So it seems like you guys had a pretty solid marriage then. I mean, which is, which is why I was so upset about not being, like, supportive because I know that, like, when I tell you we went like, debt, money, spending things to have attorney fees um, for, you know, like, the custody, the cardinal litem or over litem, whatever it is, mm-hmm. the gal. Like, we spent so much money and doing all those things and, like, working together to do all that. And it was so, I guess, like, upsetting that he wasn't, so I did have anger fire out stupid stuff because I was so pissed and, like, really wanting to, like, talk with him or Landon, like, together so I could, like, just explain, like, hey, this is what I think we can do in this situation. So it was just me trying to get him to talk to me, like, privately. I already knew you guys were, you know, listening or whatever. Right. I already knew that, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah, he... Al was just singularly focused on what happened again. And, right. and besides this situation, have you ever been around a parent who a child goes missing before and not return home? Um, no. Because like, I've, I've worked with a family. It was a serial killer case I had in 2006, and the guy was picking off daughters. Were you picking them off? Yes, in Denver. He was actually an informant of ours, which was not our best day. Okay. But he was going around killing these girls, and then they were they were high risk girls, so they were working, you know, on the streets some or using drugs or whatever. But 
some of these girls, we haven't returned them home. Mm -hmm. And if you're a parent of a missing kid versus even a deceased kid, mm -hmm. it's a lot different because you're looking at every corner. You're looking to say, is that my daughter or my son? Even if you think they're dead right. and your mind goes to the worst, but you even... Even though we've convicted this killer for killing these girls mm -hmm. because he confessed to them and whatever else, uh, we still have to have the girls to bring home. Right. And so there's no closure. And I'm seeing uh, Al from a distance going through that because I still deal with dads 14 years later mm -hmm. who are looking for their daughters right. at bus stops and malls and whatever. So. And see, that's the hard part is, like, people are like, you know being upset and I'm like I haven't had the opportunity to like even just sit down and be like okay look well, this is I've given my life to take care of these children I, I have they should not you know right. and that, that I, I've done that mm -hmm. and it's so hard because inside that I don't get to express that emotion to have that you know to say to anyone or, or anything like that and that's the most difficult part yeah. because I've had to just be like how can I, how can I make the situation back? You know, like I mean, come on, sir. Let's be honest. I'm John. By the John. Way. Yeah. I mean, like Albert was talking about, and again, whether you made him say this or not. I mean, literally, woke up on Christmas. I always make it about the kids and Christmas because they don't get to spend Christmas with us. So, like, if they went home for holidays, you know, they might leave. You know, the school gets out. We might not see them until you know January. So. I, I always spent my time trying to make sure every time, I didn't believe in certain holidays, I believe in Halloween, but to make sure every ho every holiday was like revolved around the situation. So for, if you look at the situation, I went, you know, we have every house and we have cars and we have whatever. So I worked my entire life in education and got a doctorate degree in education. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's like, Everything I work so hard for, everything I work, I mean, what is it, 16 years in military or, you know, service and things like that, no matter how much we had did on that, it took us everything to get the case. Right. And, and that was where we were at in our safe spot. So for a person who can, you know, take care of everyone and do everything for everyone and then just cannot do it for a split second, that's the hardest part. Mm hmm you know, and knowing that this is an image getting set on me, all these horrible things, all these things that are just not true. Well, that's what we'd like to get to today. And that's, you know. Yeah. So I'd like to talk about the split second, but first let's go to Gannon. Because okay. what we do is called victimology. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of that before? Yes, sir. So victimology is we find out as much as we can about Gannon, the victim. Okay. And even if he's safe somewhere, even if he's not, knowing more about him, especially since you were the last person with him, uh, helps us to try to figure out, like, say we don't have a suspect, somebody's killed, but we have nothing. Okay. Then we will look at that person to see what drew that, that homicide that homicide there. Why did those two people interact at that time? Okay. And then we'll also do things like uh, it's uh, the, the subject, the situation, and the location. So something happened. Gannon's here. You have someone or something that did him harm, and then you have why the location. Okay. So we have those three things. And, you know, we've looked through your house and, you know, done the CSI stuff and looked at all the, you know, body fluids all over the house and garage and whatever else. So that's all been done. Um, I'm curious to see your challenges of Gannon uh, here when you had to be a parent and then there. Challenges successes, whatever else. What special attention did he need? What can you tell me about him? Well, here it was, he was younger, you know, um, fourth grade. He started to mature a little bit, hitting towards, you know, like sixth grade. Uh -huh. So, like, here he was more so of, like, um, let's see, ha like, at that time and situation here, okay, so prior to that, we never got to see him except, like, every other weekend for a long time. Okay. Right. All right, so then when um, Albert, we finally paid all the money and got the attorney, whatever, um, Albert had to choose between getting out, excuse me, getting out of, um, sorry, getting out of the military or the kids in a way, kind of, because mm -hmm. mom wasn't given any or whatever. Um, so then that's when we step in and say we're going to 
keep them here in our home here, and I'll stay here with them, and then, you know, we'll go from there. Right. So during that time, he also didn't get to see his mom. A, she didn't have a place to live. Um, B, she was also, um, she had had a baby, but then mainly to her, not to, I'm not going to trash her. I'm going to say she was married to someone who didn't, who didn't take care of, who, mm-hmm. who wouldn't take care of them like they should okay. with her being pregnant in right. that situation. So with mom not having that foundation support, she wasn't able to come to the house a lot. And when she did come to the house, there's time she came that she was like, oh, you know, she just that wasn't in a good place. So I let her stay at her home. And Gannon had a tough time every time because in his mind, he just wanted to be like a stepsister. Do you know the stepsister? Mm-hmm. Who? What? His you, stepsister? Yeah. You mean Harley? No. His oh, sister. Landon's? Yeah. No. no I don't. Mia. Mia. Mike mm-hmm. Starter. Got it. You know, Mike Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So he wanted it to be like Mike Starter, which was they go to um, mom and dad's house for a week. And other mom and dad. Right. You know what he said. Got it. That was Gannon's mindset when he was here. Grandparents, amazing people, which is Landon's family. Um, amazing people, grandma, I think I'm going to Nana. Nana and Poppy, great people. They would always come get them on weekends and things like that so that I'd have time to, like, you know, do whatever I needed to do or if I wanted to go shopping or go hang out with people, whatever. So we had all that, you know, going on here and the missing piece was, you know, Albert had to. You know, Sarah country. Yep. Um, Gana would do his schoolwork, very smart. I think he made always here in fourth grade. I'm pretty sure he made always here in fourth grade. So, made always here. Didn't have, like, an issue at all. Well, what was he like when he got home from school? Because Albert's out. You're having to take care of him. Well, to be honest with you, I got him from after school, which was about, like, 5, 5.30-ish. So, by the time we did homework um, and all those things, it was almost time to, like, get ready for bed. Are you doing his homework with him? Is he doing it right. on his own? What? See, the difference between schools, and I'm not trying to talk about Colorado, if you're from Colorado. No, the difference between sure. Colorado and South Carolina schools was South Carolina did a lot more talk, history and, and those type of things where Colorado probably thought it really wasn't relevant. We want to focus on reading and math and things mm-hmm. like that. So he had a, he did struggle with history, so we had to sit at the table a lot of times and, like, really work on, like, he was a mathematician. He's, he, he's, he's so, like, like his dad. Gannon is just like he said. He is so mathematically inclined, you know, like an engineer type brain. So when it came to anything, history and right. reading science stuff, unless it was something he liked, he didn't like. So we spent hours sometimes, you know, working on those things. But with knowing the curriculum, it was easy for me because I already knew the stuff coming curriculum. And so by the time we did that, it was time for him to go to bed, you know, yada, 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 yada. So that was. That's here. So yeah. then what about in Colorado? How so, is that different? Well, when we get to Colorado, of course, I start them in school, which would have been August. Okay. So I start them in school. It was a big help because Gannon is at this point a little bit more mature. He knows he'd stay with us. Because, see, I took him to Alaska and homeschooled him before we got to Colorado. So I homeschooled him for those two months. And then we transitioned into Colorado. Actually, it wasn't August. I'm sorry, I told you the story. It was, in, it was that January that we got here because I homeschooled in November, December, not of this past time, but of the year got before. Okay. Sorry, I didn't remember. So January 2019. Yes. Yeah, so I homeschooled in 2018, November, um, Christmas time because mom couldn't get them in mm-hmm. for whatever reason. Then we came on to, um, but I think she ended up getting them and she flew them back to Colorado for a week or something. She got them for a week maybe. We went back to Colorado. So January 2019, we would have started school in Colorado. Okay. All right. So get them in school, which Colorado, I mean, I think it was like May, middle May, they would go to school in Colorado to middle May. Right. So January, February, March, April, okay. So it was pretty simple in the terms of we would do like, you know, uh, he never had homework in Colorado for some reason. Um, so it was always Albert would be like, make them ride their laps or, you know, make them go do all these things. And then, you know, um, it was time for them to go to summer. So what time does he normally get home from school? Well, around that time, he went to another school because this new school wasn't built. Okay. So it would have been like 3, 45, 4 o'clock maybe just because it happened to come from across town. Mm-hmm. And then come in, let's see. Fall? Fall. Yeah. yeah. So they came back in August. So we went on. Gannon went with us on a big cruise in the summer because he wanted to, he didn't want to go home to his mom. Right away, he wanted, we gave him a choice. You want to go on a family cruise, or you want to go, you know, to your mom's house. And he said he wanted to go on a cruise. So we all went on the big family cruise, Dominican, and I forgot a couple of places. So right. it was just me, him, Harley, and Albert. 
So it was just the four of us and right. Lena Dinga. So we all went on the same cruise and had a great time, whatever. And then, of course, they come here for the summer, and then they get ready to come back for fall. So they come back for fall, and at this point in time, I was I was working. Albert was doing, like, little shifts, like, three, two. You had your teaching job in the yeah, fall? Yeah, three, two, three, two. He was, like, working and all these things. Okay. Well, um, Harley was working, I think, and starting uh, Pikes Peak College. So we were all pretty busy, like, throughout the day. And then in the evening, it was kind of like, come in, grab this, grab this. But then I was coaching. So as I was... What were you coaching? Softball. Softball. So as at, I was... At your school? At the high school. At the high school. So as I was coaching softball, you know, um, I probably didn't get home sometimes till like, 5.30, maybe sometimes later, just mm-hmm. depending on if it was a game or practice or something like that. So honestly, most of the, a lot of the help had to come from either Harley doing a lot of it, if Albert was working, or Gannon had to independently, like, you know, do a lot of it himself. Which, How did he get home? Which they were teaching. At this point in time, they were in the new school. Right. So the new school, because we lived 1.5 miles out, the new school allowed him to uh, take the bus. Take the bus. If not, they had the, the, the rest of the way they had to walk. Okay. Um, so um, coaching was over, you know, probably around, it's weird because they do softball spring, I mean, not spring, they do a fall there instead of spring. So coaching was over maybe around like October, November, you know. Gannon started having a hard time because he was wanting to go home for Thanksgiving. For his, when I tell you Gannon, he loves his Nana. Like that's his. That's his. If it was up to him, he would just. He'll just. I'll be, Nana. I'll be at Nana's house right. all the time because he loves Nana. Um. So he like wanted to go because he has two little boy cousins. If you know Gannon, has four sisters, and he doesn't have any brothers. Mm-hmm. So he, in his way, those two little boys are his like his little brothers. Okay. So if he goes to Nana's house, you know, he can spend a lot of time with his little cousins. I think it's like Bladen and Bladen or something like that. And then they can all just hang out and uh, do those things. But he didn't get to go for Thanksgiving. Albert had to work. So we kind of, I don't really cook. We've always, like, eaten out. Oh, never. It's right. my turn. So I just said, hey, listen, you know, we'll go out to dinner. We did all this Thanksgiving. Tried to make it up the best that I could because I'm not, I'm not his mom. But he wanted to be there with with the family, you know, because it's the holidays and that's what mm-hmm. it's always, you know, used to. And then of course Christmas came around and then the same thing kinda of happened at Christmas, but then we worked it out and I we figured out a plan to get them home for Christmas so that they would be able to you know, So you went to Nana's for Christmas? Spend time with the family, yeah. Because yeah. mom never had our like a house house. So Albert said it's okay if they go and then they just have to get Nana's house. Um and that was our biggest worry, like um, have you ever been here before today? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, so like if you like look on the boulevard and things like that, there's a lot of like kind of hotels, like not the best places and that was where they were staying at one point, you know, when they would come. And so that was why we were like, No, it has right. to be a house. Yeah. Yeah. So then is Gannon responsible for taking his own he has ADHD medicine. Right. right? Does he do that on his own? Do you help him with that? Um, most of the time like how this how it worked is I got all lunch boxes ready, set them on, we've been in the house with the stove that's in the corner, beside the refrigerator. We would set, you know, the lunch boxes out, snacks and let them pick and I usually always pick before Lena because he just knew that he could get it. If he beat her up, he could pick the snacks he wanted. Mm-hmm. You know, so he would pick the snacks that he wanted. And I would lay his, if Albert wasn't getting them up, I would lay his ADHD medicine, which is Vyvanse, 20 milligrams. I would lay his Vyvanse on the counter. And so what he, form is it? Is it just tablet? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I would lay it on the counter, and, and he would know, you know, like come in and take it. How does he take it? Is it with water? Like or with what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't even use water half the time. Okay. He just right. take it. He's been taking it since he was five. Okay. So. Is there any other that he's on or no? Like uh, Adderall or anything? Else? No, I don't know. I think when they were, when he was like five, they like tried a one medicine, but once the Vyvanse worked, that was it. Like that was the, that was the one. Any of the other kids on medication? Mm-mm. Hardly or, no? Okay. No, no, I don't was on any kind of like, What about you or Al? Do I don't know anything. Other than what I told you yeah. about. Uh-huh. Um, the Lorazepam, but see, the thing about the Lorazepam was they might give it to me and I might not get it again for six months. And like it might be a... You know, 30 tablets, but it was only for, like, panic attacks or things like that. As far as Albert, I know he has the gout, so I know he, I don't, 
I don't even know what it's called. Right. I'm sure it's nothing bad. But nothing that he could, uh, again, could mix up medications with or whatever in the morning, take somebody else's meds or anything. Not not that I'm aware. Now, there's stuff in the counter from, like, probably old stuff or, like, you know, like uh, Carly had her wisdom teeth taken out. I think Albert did, but I'm pretty sure he might have been smart enough to get rid of that stuff. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but none of us had, like, any, like, a... Uh, what you want to call hardcore drugs or, or right. anything like that. No, That's why I'm asking you that because of the bath salts deal that he came up with. You know, that was on the hike day, wasn't okay, it? Okay, so the bath salt thing was just totally because they did this drug class at school, which is the same class that my fifth grade did too. And it's where these people came in and they dressed up in like, a, they, I say dress, they were professionals. They are medical professionals. They dressed in their outfits and all those things and they let the kids like, uh, pretend they were working on, like, uh, what do they call those things? You know, like, as if they were doing CPR and all uh-huh. that. And yeah. during that time frame, they went over all these different drugs. So they talked about what it, what your life is on crack. They talked about doing cocaine. Like, all these. Like, it was very, very, like, in-depth for fifth grade. But at the same time, you got to think it was probably a good thing to, to kind of talk to kids about. So is about. Gannon telling you about this? Or did you find out from a teacher or? How did you find out they had this in-depth conversation? Well, I knew because they did it at our school first. So they did it at our, they did it at our school first. Mm-hmm. So it was something once they found out they did it at our school and they saw, like, all the cool pictures and things like that, other teachers wanted to know about it. So when the other teachers wanted to know about it, they, you know, went around different schools and they signed, like, I think Albert signed a permission slip or maybe sent an email to the teacher or whatever that it was okay for him to do it. So was Gannon fascinated with the bath salt thing or had – what, how did that conversation happen? Because I know that seemed to be important, you know, during the hike and afterwards and whatever. Well, he was like, okay, so Mike apparently would deliver these packages, and we never knew what they were. They we were told meat, we were told whatever. We don't know. But Albert would always talk to um, Gannon about anytime people had anything to do with like, you know, drugs and, and things of that sort. He would always say like. These are bad people. If you see anything like this, this is bad thing. Right. Gannon already had, like, some sort of uh, base foundation mm-hmm. about it, you know. And because he had, like, a, like, that sort of base foundation about it, he always had, like, uh, questions because the Megan was so small. Like, right. that, and that, right. was, that, was, that was always his main concern, is that he was wanting to know because, Baby Nova going to be okay. You know, Nova's right. Baby Nova going to be okay. And that was like his main concern in that aspect, you know, was wanting to know these things because he he was just curious of how, like, all these things worked. So were you guys on the hike when he brought it up? Or where were you? He had already brought it up prior to the hike. Okay. He had already said something when he came home after this. Was it a concern for you? Tell me what he said and how your conversation was. I don't, was. honestly, sir, I don't remember. I just remember he was telling us about the different things that they were talking about on it. And then I was like, oh, did you guys do this? And they would be like, yeah. And then I was like, oh, did y'all do this? So it was kind of like mimic the same way. Mm-hmm. So we did talk about that a lot. Was that before hike, you said? Yeah, leading up to it, before the hike, there was a lot of talk about it, you know, for a little bit. And then, of course, um, at the hike, I think he said a few things. What did he say? I just, I just remember he was talking to me. And was it concerning to you? Like what he was saying? Like he really wanted to try these things, or what? Like I didn't think anything about him wanting to try any of it or to um, do anything with it. Um, I know that he uh, said something about it, and I gave him a bath bomb. When he said um, something, what did he say? He just asked me about in general about if we had bath salts because to be honest with you he had already pooped how many times in his pants. So he said that after he pooped on the hike? He pooped a couple of times on the hike, yeah. yeah. Like when I say poop I don't mean like it might be like graphic, but just a little bit. Just a little bit to where right, it's uncomfortable right, right. and whatever. Right. And so it was the whole thing about bath salts was just I think he just wanted to like relax because he took two he ended up taking two baths. So I mean now, do you, to, and this, I don't want to be weird, but are you giving him baths? Is he taking them? No, no, no. Gannon goes by himself, and he just, you know, he's very, like, helpful, independent. Like, I've taught him so many independent skills where he can go in there and just 
now he'll forget to like bring his clothes up or right. you know the simple things like that. But okay, mm-hmm. so he he takes two baths that night or one bath that night, one the next morning or no. So I think when we got home, he took one. Me and Lena went to go get food, um, and then I think he had to use the bathroom again. Um, so he took another one. I think when me and Lena got back, he would be taking the bath. I don't really remember. And then she took one somehow. Because um, they share a bathroom in the basement? No. No? Mm-mm. So? No one. The basement was used by Harley. Okay. So where's his bedroom? Bedroom. Okay, so the bedroom's downstairs, but the bathroom, remember, is like where Harley's room is at. That's right. So where did he take the bath? Upstairs. So, yeah. So okay. so the bath upstairs. Got it. Um, usually. Would have and been. what what happens with the clothes? Does he kind of poop them? What do you mean? Does he throw them in the washer? Do you have to take care of it or? I don't wash anyone's clothes, but. Do you not? Does yeah. he take care of his own? Though? Well, we get on him about if you want to earn technology time. You know, you have to go do your own clothes. You have to like have chores around the house, and you have to do all these things. So that's what that's kind of like how it works too. Okay. Everybody had their own. I don't even do Albert's clothes. Right. Like, I don't even, you know. So That's good. An 11-year-old taking care of himself. Well, not necessarily taking care of Well, and just in that aspect. Right, right. He was he was so, like, uh, like a boy in the terms of clean clothes. Like, he could wear the same. Again, he will, he'll wear the same shirt, yeah. like, two days. He had to, like, go change it. <laughs> So what does an argument look like with Gannon? Have you guys ever argued? Um, like, maybe like in Myrtle Beach, you know, uh, we would have been like, we had, a, we're so much alike. So we are so much alike in terms of we both have stomach problems really, really bad. Um, we both have like uh, anxiety, so like, you know, so to speak, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's so like, he's so like kind and, and like uh, uh, kind-hearted to, and then the point of like, we can get upset about something, but then the next minute he'll be like, I am. He'll be like, oh, you know, talk about something or we'll just say something. Or And he had tremendously increased the amount in Myrtle Beach. I don't think I ever heard him be like, um, I love you or like, you know, like, uh, I mean, like the holiday might come, you know, they just say, oh, it's right, something, whatever. But, like, since having him all the time, it became more of, like, I I would hear I love you, like, like almost all the time, you know. And so I felt like it was on the, the holiday, the Christmas before. Is that what you're saying? He disappeared? He what now? When you said around the holiday, he was saying I love you. I'm saying, like, once, yeah, well, yeah once we started more and more having um, then, he and I became a lot closer because of just, like, wanting to have that connection with both the kids. You Surely know. you had some arguments with him, though. Did, did you ever have to discipline him or no? Well, I never, ever have, never spanked any of the children, never, because I just don't believe in spanking other people's kids. So we never had that. Now, as far as, like, okay, you are in trouble, you're going to do this. Yeah, that's with any kid, with any well, of what's, them. What's the biggest disagreement you had with Cannon? Uh, let's see, the biggest disagreement. I think probably because he doesn't and again he probably shouldn't have this on him as a kid but not like seeing the light of how he couldn't if he couldn't go home he was so like you know kind of like forgiving go like, it's okay mommy don't have money to do it you know and if I said anything like, well and I probably shouldn't have but I did I would be like well she quit doing this we could she could pay for it. And I would always figure out a way, but then it was like, you know, I'd say, I, I wanted him to see that. So was this a certain incident? incident? Do like I know? The biggest disagreement you had, was this a certain time? Or you no, we never talking? had, like, big, like, there was never any, like, uh, big all-out, like, are you, when you say disagreement, like, clashes or, like, screaming, shouting? Well, I'm a parent, so I've had mine. You mean disagreements, like, like disagreements, yelling, yeah, at the like kids. yeah, like like that kind of disagreement, but never not like a. So what's the most upset moment. you've been with Cannon? Where we've like. Where you've had to yell and oh, I've yeah, had yeah. to yell at my kids. I got you. I see what you're saying. So like where we've had to like fuss at each other mm-hmm. over 
whether or not he did something. If he that, did something. That has to happen if you're a parent. That's right, right, right. I'm not I didn't know what you were you. saying. I thought you were asking Again, me like. No, you I'm, more, like, I'm more looking at this from Gannon's point of view. I'm not judging you. No, I thought you were asking me more of like, you know, like. No. Like whippings or like Beating switches or, like or, or like or like something like that. No. Well, what's the most intense time you've had with Gannon? As far as you're yelling, he's yelling, that sort of thing. Um, that has to have happened, especially with stuff kids. I mean, yeah, of course. So uh, what what time do you remember? Uh, probably times that I don't remember specific times. I'd say it all revolved around Albert. Like not being disciplined, well, when Al- disciplinary enough. Yeah, you know, when Gannon was just doing something that's totally irrational, unreasonable. I have a boy. I know. Yeah. They don't behave all the time. Right. So I, what did Gannon? I don't know of any like specifics. I just know that we would have, you know, like if it would have been something that wasn't in what our teachings were, we would have, of course, like yelled. So at you each never other. had to yell at him that you remember. I said. I just said. I just but, said that to you. I said I there have been plenty of times. That, yeah, but I mean a specific one. I don't know. I don't know a specific one. I mean, probably from playing. Well, I can tell you for me, it's when my, my son rolled a basketball underneath me. I was going to go in for a layup, and I almost twisted my ankle and broke my back at the same time. Oh, goodness. And I yelled at him. Yeah. Am I sad I did it now? Yes. But I couldn't help myself. He was – that was a stupid thing to do. He was just seeing – what if I roll the ball under dad? Not that I even jump that high. Right. I even jump her. But, yeah. Yeah, that's, I couldn't help it. I turned around and yelled at him. I didn't hurt him or anything. Yeah. But that, with you being home with just Gannon and sometimes Elena and sometimes Harley and I'll be on the road, every once in a while, something had to go wrong. I mean, if you say go wrong, like, yeah, I, I just. And you have to say, awesome. and you have to set things right like oh, what yeah. my son did with me with the basketball oh yeah we that was and i'm curious as far as how gannon would react if you have to really get on to him for something that he did that was stupid he's a boy yeah gannon wouldn't like yell back gannon would not like yell back and be like uh you know like uh, confrontational so gannon would not like he might say something smart well, how did he react under his breath do you or... have an incident you remember or no no. And you had to put your foot down and say, Gannon, that's not acceptable. No, like if I said that, he pretty much listened to to, to what I said. Yeah. It was like not, I don't remember us, him screaming back at me at any. Or just going in his room, slamming the door. Situation. Anything or, like that. Uh, slamming the door, room, TV. Yeah. I mean, I don't. So no, Ma- no, no more no. so of me, like saying something Albert might have been more of the. If there was slamming doors or anything, it could have been me, like, going back saying, Albert, you need to make sure he's not doing this, and then, you know, goes in there in that situation. Okay. You know? Like, Albert was teaching him how to use a, a, a box cutter and, like, different things like that, and there were times that I might have been like, oh, Albert, I don't think you should have done this because he was acting weird in this way, but that would have been early in the beginning before we started getting him, like, counseling Mm-hmm. So once he started getting, you know, like... No, remind me the counseling. What was that for? Do what now? The counseling. Um, so Albert said that he should get counseling uh, through the military just for, like, all the transitions and being, like, in and out of schools and, like, all different things like that just to make sure that his uh, mental, like, like, well-being was fine. And Albert said that anytime he would, you know, of course, counselors can't tell you, you know, like, what was going on unless it was something... You know, pressing, and of course, Albert would always come out and say that so everything's fine, and then Gannon would come back and tell us what he talked about. But as far as like, did, uh, did uh, Gannon never come at you with a knife or something? Wasn't there an incident? Well, that's what I was just telling you about. There was when Albert, I told you Albert was trying to teach him how to use a. That's the box cutter. A box thing? cutter, yeah. So he, the Gannon, had this, this thing about the knife, and he was doing like this, and and whoever told you that it was coming at me, that is not. That's why I'm asking you. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting so, the real story so, here. Okay. No, 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 no. You know you've got stories from everywhere, and you yeah. probably are not looking at me for mine. But my, but that is not what happened. Gannon was in a, a upset, which the video was shown to the council lady. Okay. And Albert was so upset because he was like, um, "You should have let me get the video or something like that." But Gannon was in more of like a an upset rage because this was in the very beginning. When he had the first transition yet to a yet another school. Was this fall? 
you know, so this would have been, I don't know if it had been fall, but okay, so fourth grade, new school, uh, homeschool, then they went to the first school in Colorado, okay. and then the new school opened. Correct. So it was somewhere between that time frame of, again, it was, it was too much transition for him. That had nothing to do with him being mad at me or being mad at Albert or Landon or whatever. It was too much transition for him that he was so upset. Like, you know, like. So I where mean, was he when he was doing this? Was he in his room? I, in I feel like it was in the kitchen. I, I, don't, I don't really remember, sir. You're asking me something that was. That was a while ago. I don't remember. Yeah. I mean. Were you threatened by Gannon doing that? Did it I make told, you nervous? Well, I told Albert. I said, it, I said, it has a mentality. Like, in my mind, I said, it has a mentality of, like, he's going to want to, I said, not hurt himself, or not necessarily hurt someone in general, but, to, I mean, specific, but in general. And so, like, I was a little worried because I thought, you know, like, he has so much anger and aggression for what was going on because yeah. it, it honestly was Albert hadn't even got there yet I feel like I feel like Albert had just either got to Colorado or hadn't got there yet right and so he had to go from being with his mom back to me and then Albert wasn't there mm -hmm. and then it was okay like I gotta go to do I gotta start a new school I gotta get make new friends you know like all so those things how did you handle it how did you calm him down he yeah. just typically always. I no, always with, I'm specifically with the box cutter thing. How did you calm him down? I don't. I don't know if it, it was a knife he had then. I was just saying, was like he had been using a box cutter, so that's how he. I was okay. teaching him in the cry. So I remember I took his amiibo. He loves amiibos. And I took his amiibo and I just threw his, his amiibo out in the front yard. And I told him, I was like, we're not, that the Amiibo's gone, we're never getting it again. And I made him call his mom. Mm -hmm. And so she, I don't remember what we exactly said, but I know she was basically saying, like, you know, you better listen. She gets upset, sends me a message. I send her a message back, and we were both, like, mad at each other as in the end, Landon. And then it was kind of more of like, okay, it's calm down. But this was... A, right, a year ago, mm -hmm. you know, um, so that that was the the gist of that. It was he needed that outlet. Okay. He needed that counsel. Well, that helps us. That's what I'm talking about with the victimology thing. He needed that. He needed that. About him. Oh, that's he needed that um, um, outlet to be able to say, okay, when I have anger and I have upset, because see, typically, like I said. Gannon doesn't get angry and just, you know, lash out or, or, or say anything like mm -hmm. that. He doesn't. He doesn't, mm -hmm. like, or if he says something smart back to Albert, it's usually a, a he's very literal. He'll say something and then be like, oh, yeah, we should have done Right. Um, so that's in your uh, assessment of him. There may, I could probably count on one, one hand the times that Gannon would have been uh, aggressive like that. Right, and not even to the point of aggressive of like he actually acted upon it other than showing signs. And I think once we got the counseling in place, um, he was able to uh, have his friends now. He knew he was in a place that... I don't think they're watching through this. This is a oh. brand new oh, thing. Like, it's even, they even said it's like backwards because the camera's there no. but the window's there no. so the yeah. seat should be there yeah, anyway but um no i just didn't know because i thought i heard a fire alarm. um so he never like really just you know um had a hard time until the counseling and once the counseling was in in play i seen leaps in the way that not only he acted but our relationship um with each other um relationship with dealing with okay go do this um sir it's so hard because john, okay. i'm sorry i'm old but I'm don't sorry. Call me. john yeah. it's so hard because if i get up in the morning and i i have gannon would even say you want me to take the dogs out so you can have 10 more minutes of sleep and he i convinced him into changing my name mm -hmm. <laughs> so i had him on board of like calling me a different name you know and so because i didn't ever like my original name so i had him on board of calling me a different name um so the helpfulness through not only just the counseling and then having that stability became so great for him 
Hmm. And, and that's the the piece that I really wish, you know, like, I know you sit here and say you've heard people say stuff or talk or, or you know, whatever. I know you've, you've spent your career going through people who you've had to help and people who you've known or bullshit or whatever. Hmm. But Gannon benefited so much from, okay, from going in there that he was able to talk to us. And that's when I started hearing more of like, okay, I love you. And he would say hardly, like they never really like, he never really, he would say it, but like not that like situation of like, oh, I love you and like the affection and things like that. And mm-hmm. that began to, uh, I would, thought we were on a path for him really to see that I could be more of, more, I don't just want to take nobody's place as a mom, but be more of a, right. like a, a mom figure to him. And that was where I felt like we were, yep. we were definitely headed. Good. Well, that's helped him. That's how. In that situation. So, that kind of answers the bath salts thing. He he really wasn't looking to, he wasn't outright asking you, I, I want to get high off of bath salts. No, no. Um, I think that it was more of a situation with, they were going to school in a, a school that had older kids and I think it was just more of a they heard these this is speculation I'm just telling you what my observation is based upon how I heard them talk and you know people talk they were just wanting I hate to say like to fit in per se and it was just a situation where Gina would do whatever in order to just be a player play a game and, and just do you said you have a boy a little bit of boy mm-hmm. yeah. and that was that was in the they just love it. Like you could, I could tell Dan, do you want to play your switch? Okay, we help me go do this. You go take charge. We do this. We do this. And so he was in such a yes sir, yes ma'am mode of giving technology. He could do it. And I think that was hard going to school with kids that were a little older and coming home on the bus. They had the same, you know, you have some boys who get to do a little more than others. And I, from this is based upon my assumption, just from talking to him, like, what we're talking about on the hike is that there was just more, you know, like not pressure, maybe kind of, so it was peer pressure, but there was just more of like wanting to know what could I do to get this person to like me. To, because he only liked certain friends, and those were his people. He would obsess on them, like kind of friend named Connor. That's the person he obsessed on. And he went to Braden, that's the person he obsessed on. So if someone liked the interest that he likes, he will like develop that obsession on them and just want to not a bad obsession. I don't mean like a right. me no, like, I get it. He wants that that that's the person he wants to hang out with. He didn't have, you know, twenty seven friends. He had just that person. Mm-hmm. And so that was what and I think I feel like with that, that's where we were at in that situation of just trying to you know, this thing is bad, but I understand you have a friend who wants to do this. You know, that type of thing. Yep. And that was Good. that helps. No, so, so that helps with the bath salts, and and I'm trying to see how Gannon reacted to these little things that happened to him until he went missing. Mm-hmm. Uh, the candle incident. Can you tell me about that? Okay, so Gannon wanted to. I don't remember if he wanted to stay up 30 minutes. I can't remember. There was something he did that allowed him to earn some extra time. There, there was something he did, but Albert had grounded him from playing the switch. So he wasn't allowed to, you know, play a switch or whatever. He was only allowed to, um, like, if he wanted to watch an extra movie or something like that, that he had earned. Right. Well, on the hike earlier that day, he was so helpful with me. And people think, you know, sick and he's still whatever. But I have serious stomach issues and still have to operate. But he was so helpful with, uh, you know, taking care of the dogs and stuff. And I had told um, Gannon that, you know, yeah, so like that, that Sunday is the day that could be his last day. So we sat around and, you know, we had like, before we left, we were like on the sofa and I'm just like crying and he's like, why are you crying? And we're just like, he didn't know who that was. Like he knew the name, mm-hmm. but not like growing up in like my generation to like know who that was. So we just sat there and like talked about it and I told him, I was like, you know, Kobe had all girls. And so Gina started relating in the terms of being like, oh, that's, you know, like me, I have all sisters. And so, like, you know, we were talking about that. And then in between some of those questions might have been certain questions that led to what he was asking me about what went on school in that, in that thing, okay. in, that, in that talk. Right. And so that led into 
on the wall on the hike that day about what we had talked about. So then that evening, I don't remember what he did, but I remember I said he had 30 minutes of something extra. And I knew, I knew it wasn't his um, Nintendo or things like that at the time because he wasn't supposed to earn that back until the next day. Um, and so then um, it, we had, I think I was upstairs, you know, Carly wasn't there. Harley had to work until I'm sure you are like this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Harley had to work until I think it was like maybe 10, 15 or so, whatever. Um, and then um, Gannon had, I think, what was he doing? He was doing something, I don't remember. So I go back upstairs. Then I hear the machine was saying, like, beep, 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 like, is this one coming in the house? Okay. So I put the code in thinking that the live alarm thing went off. There was no doors open or, you know, none of that stuff. No doors open. Um, so then I go back or lady with that, and I see she's faking sleeping, but not really mm-hmm. sleeping. And then, um, but she had, like, the cover over her head a little bit. And so, like, she was doing, like, whatever. And so then I hear the thing saying fire. Like the, Does it actually say fire? It said fire. Okay. So that was the crazy thing, because I never had heard. I didn't know what. I thought it would just be like, ah, Right, like a siren. Smoke. But I don't know if it was those detector things being fire or if it was the actual um, machine things being fire. Um, but it was just like fire, 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 whatever. Um, so then I run back in there and I look and I see, I don't see anything in the or I don't see anything. I look downstairs and I don't see anything. And it was just, it was still going. So I grab Lena. I'm going to tell you exactly wrong, but I'm pretty sure I grab Lena first and I grab the dog. I gave her the keys. I think that's how it went. Don't quote me on that. But I'm, I'm sure it was in that order. So yeah. And we run out to the truck. I feel like. Either I open the door. I don't remember. Somehow they get to to the truck. Okay. Um, and then I run back downstairs. Because at this point, I already know that there's, there's smoke. And so I run back downstairs. And run back downstairs. And Deanna was awake, but not awake. Like, you know how you can almost, like, be asleep, but not asleep type mm-hmm. thing. And so he's in his bed. No, no, no. He wasn't in his bed. Where was he? He was on the sofa. On the sofa. Right, right. So, um, he was on the sofa. And so, like, he, it, when I pull the cover, I pull Gannon with the cover. And so, at this point in time, then I put the the fire that's out. So, what did the fire look like? Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't, like, huge. It Where was, was it? In the carpet? On the sofa? Uh, I feel like it was on, like, one of the covers. On the covers? Was the cover on the sofa, though, or was it on the floor? Oh, I don't remember. I just remember it was in a small location. It wasn't a big enough fire to, to I mean, like. Yeah, what color was it? Do you remember? Was it yellow, red, red, orange? I don't, I don't remember what color. Wasn't in a color to like. I mean, wasn't in a color. Was it because a, I think what blue burns the hottest. Then you have stuff. If stuff gets involved in the fire, you have a yellowish or reddish color. I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> don't remember. I don't remember. Sorry. How can you show me how tall it was? Like. Do you I remember? don't remember. It wasn't tall. Wasn't tall. I don't feel like it was that tall. I mean, but my tall might be different than your tall, so I don't want to yeah. say. But I don't. Still, a fire's going to freak you out. Right? right. Yeah. So I, when I pull the cover, I pull um, him with the cover too, and we run out. Did you put out the fire or no? I know that we took the covers, both of us. When when he sees what's going on, we took the covers and like we smashed down on the on the fire, like on it, yeah, because. My own thought was oxygen, put it out. Right. That was all I could think about. Like, you know, put it out, whatever, whatever. Did, did it take much? Sorry to interrupt. <clears throat> did Did it take a lot to put it out or no? Or did you just smother it and then move? I don't know. Or was it, it something was, in between? You, was there what now? Something in between. You know, I'm, we, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth. No. Something in between? Like in, in between, just it happened real quick, or you had to fight it for a while? Or? Oh, it wasn't like fighting for a while. Like, there was already a bunch of covers on the side that we had, t- that I had grabbed them all and put over here, which is why the whole thing was bottled with covers. There was okay. like burnt co- covers bottled up everywhere. So it was like stuff there. Um, and then I run, and he's running behind me. So as I'm running up, he like trips or whatever, it's, but he's right behind me. Mm-hmm. So then I think I exit. Back out in the garage, I feel like. Um, so the truck was in the garage. No, 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 no. It was out front. Oh, I'm okay. saying like I think I, I, I think I exited back out the garage. Okay. Um, because I feel like I just ran back to that door. I'm not, I, I'm not 100 percent positive. I know we ran out. Then Gana runs right, right out behind me, and when um, I'm 
I turned around and I, I'm saying something to him because I'm like, hey, because in my mind, I, I don't remember if I had gotten the dogs, even though I had already right. had grabbed the dogs. And so, like, he's, I don't remember what we were saying, but we were all in a frantic, you know, whatever. He jumps in the driver's, I'm sorry, passenger side, and I'm in the driver's side of the truck. Okay. Lena is in the back, and at that point, we drive off. So we drive off for, I don't know, like a minute, maybe, and then... Um, we drive back, but there's no gas in the truck. So was anybody burned from that? So Gannon you, had you or Gannon? Gannon had a little, like little burns on his arms uh, from that, and then um, but at the time, so Gannon always lays with like his uh, either it's like his underwear on or, mm-hmm. or like or like something like that. So um, at the time when we ran out, I feel like did he have a shirt? I don't remember if he grabbed a shirt or grabbed another cover uh, when we ran out or whatever. But I knew that he had some burns on his arm, but I know they weren't, like, they weren't bad, like, burns that were bad. They were just, like, uh, if you peeled a little bit or whatever. Were they um, discolored, though? Was his skin reddish, pinkish? What was it? Or did you see it then? Or not, no, it was not till later that okay. I really, like, paid attention and should have been like, okay, well, you know, because I did later on. I was on it, but she couldn't ask about later. But, okay. Um, so, yeah, so, like, our arms... I mean, arms, um, his arms, and then we get in the truck or whatever, and then we drive off. So then we come back. And so I'm, of course, and, like, I text Harley, I text Albert, you know, what had happened, and I said, you know, this is what happened. I tell Harley, this is what happened. Don't paint it when you come home. Because the house, at this point in time, we get back in, smells like nothing but smoke. Mm-hmm. And so nothing but smoke at this point in time, and it was just like I couldn't get the smoke out. Even opening up the, like, windows and all those things, I couldn't get the smoke out. Um, so that was... That so was what, what happened with these covers that you used to put out the flame? Well, the covers were either left there, because um, I remember getting the stuff, some of the stuff, and putting outside in a trash can, which I even showed the people when they got there that I put in a trash can. Do you guys have singular trash cans for each house there, or just... Do you have a dumpster or what? You really like it. It's a big trash. It's just a big brown trash. One of the wheel ones you wheel yeah, out yeah. and put by the curb. Okay. Yeah. So it was just one of those. Um, and it wasn't, no one was like, whatever. But we did want our to like, like come home. Like come, not necessarily come home and be for that. But we maybe like had updated a little bit to Albert because we were like, Thinking, you know, like, oh, he'll be upset and like, want to come home anymore, you know, like, whatever, because he was, like, worried or, uh-huh. you know, like, whatever. So, I mean, my message to Albert probably was a little bit, like, uh, a little more over exaggeration just because I was wondering. So, when you say we, did you talk with the kids about let's get Albert home? No, no, no. We, we, we did sit down. And because when I was asking him, like, was this, you know, did you do this on accident? Was this an accident? This, you know, whatever. And so we were just talking about, you know, like the whole thing. Everybody was in one room. Uh, Lena, we were all in the bedroom at the time, which was our bedroom upstairs. Okay. So we were all in the bedroom upstairs, and it was just, you know, just talking and, you know, whatever. And I said, I got to let your daddy know. And then I was, I was not going to tell him. That was the original thing. It was not to tell him. It was just to fix it and not tell him. Mm-hmm. Huh. Because then I was like, if I just do that, then we don't have to, you know. We don't have to worry about it. Right. Uh, but then that was just an opportunity to be like, oh, well, maybe Albert is like, well, I'll just come back home. Or, you know, because it was hard, like, you know, always, all of us just there, going through all these memories and, and doing all these things without him, you know, mm-hmm. like being there. Whatever. No, I get it. So that was, that was So did hard. Gannon agree that was a good idea to kind of play it up a little bit? Did he agree? Yeah. We all, we all were in, like, an agreement. So how did you play it up? Was the fire really not that big, and you made it like it was a big deal? Or well, to, to whenever just we Just to get Al to say, hey, well, maybe I should get back home. When we were explaining it to to people in general, like, that was our whole, like, oh, my gosh, it was, like, oh, whatever. Like, because if, if you got my phone, you saw that, like, if we, for the people that we messaged, we made it more of, like, a, you know, like a bigger situation, like, than what it, than what it really was, and, 
Yeah, because I couldn't understand how a, a candle could make a big fire, because my wife lights candles yeah. all the time around the house, and if we knocked them over, and if you knock it over, kind of nothing happens. Yeah. I mean, it might singe the carpet a little bit. But, yeah. Uh, I've seen the pictures, and I'm surprised that, you know, that much of the carpet was burned. Well, it was probably because, I, I mean, I don't know, but I know that we did go, like, push down on the carpet, and it was on the cover, which was the cover was wrapped up on him. Right. So, I mean, I don't know, like... That's what... I was just curious about the burn itself on the carpet, because that yes. looks awfully big for a candle. I didn't even be... think that was even big. Was that well, really big? Yeah. I mean, oh. that big for a candle, because, like I said, my wife, we look like a... A church sometimes with all the candles she lights. Yeah. We have dogs running around and kids. And yeah, whatever. yeah, no, it was. So I was just surprised a candle could make, you know, a big black thing in the carpet that much. That it might have been held there for a little while. Yeah. Maybe mm-hmm. he tried to set the yeah, thing on fire Yeah, I don't know about. I, but see, the thing is, I don't know that Gana would try to, like, purposely, like, set something on fire. I don't know. I know that he did tell me later that he thought that I was coming downstairs and he, had, he was playing his game. So, I don't so he know. was playing his game when he knocked the candle over? Yeah, so he did tell us, he told me and Lena and all of us that when we were all talking together, he told us that he thought I was coming downstairs like, to catch him on his game or whatever. Oh, and that's why he knocked it over? I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know if he accidentally or thought, you know, whatever. I just know he said that he thought. But did he take any responsibility for knocking the candle over or did it just say it happened or what? No, he did say that. Okay. He did say that he had that he had done it, that he had started it or whatever. And I asked, that's why I kept asking him, like, did you do it on purpose? That's what I'm curious about. Or did you, you know, was it an accident? He told me an accident. He thought I was coming downstairs. So, and to me, sir, we could afford to buy another yeah, for sure. sofa uh-huh. and another carpet. Now, that's not, like, that's not a problem. Like, I mean, you're talking about, like, things that we had and nice things that we can afford to buy that. So that's not, that was not a point of contention, and Gannon very well would have known that too. So did it burn, it burned the sofa also? I don't think it burned the sofa. Okay. I don't think it burned the sofa. I'm just saying, like, in general in the area, whether if it would have burned sofa, TV, all that. We, right. Did he like the candle? We could afford to do it. Or who lit that it? candle? Do you know? The candle was, he had already lit the candle because the dogs were... And so he had already lit the candle, which we Does allowed. He normally do that? Yeah, we allowed him to be. He could light the candle if he wanted to. He was allowed to open like packages that came. That's why I was telling Albert taught him how to use like the box cutter and stuff like that. He was allowed to do those type of things um, as long as you know he he was usually within reason. Like okay, I'm not going to go light you know the line on fire or you know like mm-hmm. or something like that. When I was little too. Like, I was, I did the same thing about curious about matches and, you know, like things like that. But we had already given him enough of, you know, like, safety talks about, like, Albert, when he talked to him about using the box cutters and knives, he always showed him the right direction, and, you know, not, you know, not to just go, like, you know, cut open boxes and stuff. So he had already had these, you know, like, talks about the correct way to do right. these things. Mm-hmm. So, well, it explains those two. So I've got the bath salts, the candle, and now the foot injured in the garage. So tell me about that. That, the foot oh, injured. Oh, sorry, before I go there, so we don't forget. You said peeling these later. I just remember that, I just remember that on Monday his arm had a little bit of peeling to it. And and that's when I said in my mind, and like I told the other ladies here, that I did at that point say, hmm, I probably should like think about if, this is if I need to, if, if later on after I put stuff on it, I need to think about if if it gets worse, you know, monitor the situation, you know, like those type of things. Did you put stuff on it or no? Well, we had took that green hello stuff and we had took and put the little, because the dog had just had get bit before, so I already had that little wrap stuff, you know. Okay. And so we had already done that in that situation. Did you put it on both arms? I think it's on the right arm, I feel like. And then um, when did you do that? Was that Sunday night, Monday morning, both? I think it was Sunday night. Okay. Um, no, actually it wasn't. It was it was through the night because we stayed up late. So it would have already been Monday morning hours, like into Monday morning hours. So why were you guys up late? Because no, it, we, couldn't, we couldn't breathe. The smell was so, like, it, like, stuck in the house from the smoke. We couldn't breathe. 
no matter what we did. So where did you guys hang out until the, you could breathe? We, we slept in our room, and then we opened all the windows downstairs. Okay. And uh, all four of you slept in? So Lena, Harley, let's see, Lena, Harley, me, and him were in the room for a while. Then Gannon went to, I think he went to Lena's room at this point. Yeah. So then Gannon went to Lena's room for a while, but then he was in his room by the time he woke up. So I don't know if he got up in. What time do you think he went to Lena's room? room? Was it after midnight or then? Sure, I don't know. When did you call him in sick? It was pretty early in the morning. Well, we didn't, what happened is I didn't, we didn't, all I did was I called and asked about his stomach. It was nothing to do with anything to do with the fire or anything like that. My my question was, I had already given him Miralax, which was like, you know, Miralax. Mm-hmm. So we had a, a prescription of over-the-counter, I say over, whatever it is, prescription Miralax, or right. or whatever. And I had already given him that. And so then I also had X-Lax. And I thought, you know, at what point can I not, like how much is enough, if I can't get him to pass this, at what point is there enough, or can I go ahead and do it like an enema, or like, cause Albert can tell you, I've given him an enema before, and like things like that, because it gets so bad, and it's they're just so big, and they get clogged up. So that was the, the concern about how to get him to pass that. Because mm-hmm. like for me, I have to like, I can drink 10 scoops of Miralax, and it won't affect, you like won't affect me at all. Yeah. yeah. And so I didn't want it to be where it was the squirts and then also the, con- I didn't, the, the combination is different in my stomach because like I said if I take 10 of them I, I'm okay so he's having the squirts from the, and he started having those in the hike but he couldn't pass that whole evening is that right? right he would get out balls like big balls but like couldn't get like the whole thing out and that was sometimes if he finally and then when he finally had gets to be painful one out him, wasn't it? Or- for me, I lay in the bathroom and I'm in pain. Yeah. Like whenever. Was it, he telling you he was in pain? Well, he sits on the toilet. His common thing is that he'll sit on the toilet and just sit there and sit there and sit there. So as long as he's got something to focus with, again, his pain tolerance is very like high when it comes to just sitting there, like focusing, and all these things. Mm-hmm. So I mean, he he. So he spent a lot of time in the bathroom that evening, just sitting there. Yeah, off and on in the bathroom. We got kids meals, but he came out and ate his kids meal. So then it made him feel better, so I said... McDonald's or what? No, we, um, or Carl's Jr.'s. Carl's Jr.'s. Yeah. Okay. So I had originally said Burger King, but that's not Burger King right there. That's Carl's Jr. Got it. Carl's Jr.'s. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because I never go to Carl's Jr., but we got two kids meals, and I think I got something, too. And Lena went with me to go get it. Um, so he ate the uh, kids meal when we got back. But he still hadn't passed. So. Well, he... Well, if he ate, he had done something. He had already... Used it some because he wouldn't have eaten. And did, had you given the Miralax before the meal? Then I had already given Miralax like throughout the week. We always had this thing where if I went in there and took one of my shots, like of uh, acai berries or something like that, he would take one too. So it was common for me to be like, okay, here mix. And Albert would always say, go mix him up one of the drinks because mm-hmm. we put an orange juice. Well, he didn't he didn't like juices as much unless it was like Kool Aid juices, like sweet sweet. Um, so it was a common thing to always try to give Miralax to, to regulate the system. But the problem is, if you don't take the Vivance, say you don't take it for a day, like you didn't take it on Saturday, because um, family was in town, and say so you don't take it on Saturday, and if you don't take it on Sunday, that's when that's when it starts to happen. Hmm. So that's when the con- constipation and the diarrhea kind of come okay. from his hand. So like, let's say if he would have took it Saturday, and let's say he would have took it Sunday, he wouldn't have been as bad. But right. so then the problem is, Albert always would want him not on it if we're going to go do, like, a big-time activity. Because instead of having him, like, you know, zoned out on something, I mean, you, you would want your kid mm-hmm. zoned out on something. Yeah. That was the... The by then stuff. Right, right, right. Yeah. And, and so, like, the thing was, if we go somewhere that requires him to have, like, you know, massive amounts of, of things, then, you know, that yeah. we would we don't want him to be under that five minutes and just have to be like zoned in. Mm-hmm. We want him to be able to like, especially like on the hike, I wanted him to be able to like run around and do things. Because me and him were always on the top of all, like if we had hikes, we were always on the top of hikes. We were always the ones, like, right. you know, bleeding, doing everything. So was he bleeding that night? Do you know? From? Rectally. 
from anally. anally. Yeah. Um. So what happens is from him squeezing. Uh, I hate talking about the suit. It's not bad. So I'm not like. Well, I'm trying to but, figure out, you know, things right. are going on with him these right. last couple hours. Yeah. So, like, from him squeezing and stuff like that, his does the same thing as mine does, and mine does the same thing. And so that's why I told you we're so much alike. And we could relate on that because it was like, oh my gosh, you know, like blood on your butt, you know. And then just from squeezing and yeah, and things like that. And that wasn't like pouring out. Okay. So it wasn't a copious amount. Yeah. Just so because of him struggling with that all night or that evening into the night. Yeah. You don't know when he eventually felt good? Uh, or, how it works is he might feel good and then it gets him where it's hurting still until he gets it all out. It's not until he returns like 100% and being like, okay, I'm back to, I'm back to Gannon. Did he get back to Gannon that night? For Sunday? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he just, he was fine when he was downstairs. I told you he earned extra time right. to like, be able to stay up and stuff. Yeah, but I thought, was he not struggling with this after the candle incident? Right. But, like, what happens is, is, I mean, if you want to call in a GI person, but he gets where he's okay, and then a little bit more, okay, and a little bit more. It's just episodes. They happen every, once a month there is right. where he goes through those episodes of his stomach, and, and mine does the same thing. So when fine. you guys were up in the bedroom, how was he? You mean like after after the flame and fire and smoke? And he was upset and like crying because he thought he was going to lose his switch, like for a long time. Like he thought, you know, that he was going to lose his switch for a long time. So my biggest thing was, I don't care. We'll just do whatever we got to do to buy new ones, buy new whatever. Um, I would be quicker to cover up a lot of things for Jan mm-hmm. because. We just related on the same the same page, more so than Lena, because Lena would be most kind of like bratty and sure, you know, whatever. Um, so, Jana could be more of like, we can have like secrets and talk and say, hey, we're not going to tell them. Sure, you know. Right. Yeah. So, I'd be more inclined to, to like, okay, don't tell anybody, we'll fix it. And so, that was kind of like our, our conversation what we were talking about and yeah. yeah and he was he was upset like, like like very you know like upset and hurt and just trying to be whatever but we also kind of just so how like do you think he stayed up with you in the room until he finally left I, I don't know was it past midnight or do you know I don't know okay. I just want yeah, to I just want so whenever he um went to Lena's room I think he walked down. I don't. I don't remember exactly, but I know we all, because all four of us couldn't fit in the bed plus two dogs. So at one point in time, we had to switch the whole like, okay, you go sleep here, you go sleep here. And I feel like at one point Harley was sleeping on the sofa, and then Harley and Lena switched because we were up. Like I said, we couldn't breathe. It was, mm-hmm. it was it was very smoky. Um, so we were all like not sleeping. Not when Lena went to school, I'm pretty sure she probably went to sleep or it was very very. Like, exhausted. Right. Because, like, us being up and, like, you know, getting tired and stuff. So, Lena was real sleepy, but she went to school? Yeah, like, what I'm saying is when she when she woke up, she probably was, like, really, really, like, like felt like she could have used a couple more hours. Mm-hmm. Of, you know, so, why did you call what? Gannon in sick and not her? Well, she wasn't struggling with stomach problems. So, he still had him in the morning. Though. Right. Okay. So he it wasn't, I even had messaged Albert through the night and said, hey, I asked him. Mm-hmm. Like, I asked him, is it okay if Gannon sees out? And so that was, yeah. so but you, he didn't respond because he was on a different time zone. Okay. And I got messaged So you called in sick, though, too, for your work. So what I did was, I said, um, I told Albert, I said, hey, I'll just stay at home with Gannon today. And he didn't, he didn't write me back or he didn't whatever. Uh, but the plan was, I wasn't like, going to go back to the teaching. Like, that was, like, the plan was, I was, I was not going back to teaching. So, starting, when was that a plan? I think it was, like, December, so I was just going to try to use, like, days and try to, you know, whatever, because I didn't, I just didn't want to go back to teaching. Right. What did you tell your school? As far as why you didn't show up that day? For that day, I didn't talk to them about anything that day. 
your school, you didn't. Mm -mm, not that did case. you just not show? Or, did I had you have already, classes waiting on you? Or? No, 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 no. The, okay, so what happened was I transitioned because I was like, okay, I wasn't going to be a teacher anymore. And I was like, okay, well, I have to do something until this, like, the whole flight attendant thing started. So I had to do something until then. I couldn't just not mm -hmm. have money or whatever. So I got on D, I think. What is it? I don't know what district it's called, but it's one of the districts. And I said I would do a long-term sub position or I would do um, the regular sub position. And then, so then I just, at that point, it was going to just call in whenever I could work. I think it's D8. Um, mm -hmm. I have it in my email. Right. Um, I could just call in whenever I worked or whatever. And just, just so were you scheduled to show up then Monday morning? From the school that I wasn't going to work at anymore, I had already told them that I wasn't. Like, I didn't even complete paperwork with them yet. So it wasn't even, I wasn't They weren't even, counting on you to show up that day or work with What do you mean? But I had, like, I hadn't, like, signed any contracts. I hadn't, like, done anything with them because the whole plan was I was not going to be teaching. I was just going to be, um... Okay. Yeah, I get you didn't sign contracts, but were they planning for you to come in to do something on Monday and you had to call in? I, I never called in on Monday. I already told them. Did you them, text down or something? No, on Thursday or Friday, I had already told them. Morning. Okay. On Thursday or Friday, I had already told them that I wasn't coming in. Like for, I didn't go in Friday either. Like I'd already told them I wasn't. So it was like, you're asking me about if I told them Monday, but mm -hmm. I'd already told them prior. That oh, I you'd already told them, so you didn't have to tell them you're not coming in on Monday? Right, because I'd already told them, because, see, on my dad's side, there was someone who passed away, and I just used that as a, a reason why I wasn't coming on the fall, the prior week. Oh, okay. So that's... And then... How did they pass away? Well, my dad it is remarried to my stepmom. Uh -huh. or my, my dad is married to my stepmom. And then the first time they came to cancer, so... I, honestly, I didn't have any plans to go there at all. I didn't. Yeah. But it bought me some time into not teaching and then trying to get set up on the next, you know, the next schedule. Because I started developing, like, a lot of stress over teaching because it wasn't so much about teaching anymore. It was about following a piece of paper that wasn't helping the students. And so right. that was already a plan that was set separately and mm -hmm. trying to figure so it out. So you took, say the stepmom excuse then? Hmm? Did you mention stepmom for the week prior then as far as why you might not be there? No, I didn't mention anyone. I just said I had a different in the family. I didn't say anything to do with our family or stepmom okay. or anything. I just said we had a different Were they okay family. with that? Yeah. Okay. I mean. What are you going to say, right? I mean, Death in the family, you know, we can't. Yeah, and plus, too, I hadn't even done anything like with them. It was just, why would I even want to set myself up in a position to, to be teaching with them again? I just couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. I thought I could because I was like, if I do it, I would just you know, do it until you know, I could be on sub position or whatever, and I just I hated it. Yeah, well, then I had to sub for a little while yeah. before the FBI. Yes. Yeah. But that, well, see, I didn't have a problem moving into the sub list. Yeah, like, but being, subbing's not fun. Right? right, and you, of course, you don't get paid, which you should, but I didn't have a problem moving into the sub list. I just didn't, I didn't want to teach sped. I was in a hard position with not wanting to be a teacher at all. All I wanted to do was work with, like, people and being, like, able to see new people every day. And so I had to buy myself some time, you know, and it just was fortunate that someone had passed away, so... I bought myself time in order to, mm -hmm. to you say you wanted the truth, that's the truth. I bought myself time. Hard, yeah. I bought myself time to just be able to take third I think I think it was Thursday, Friday, maybe Friday. I don't know. It was one or two days. To take that time through the weekend to kind of self reflect and be like, How can I, you know, get to the position where I want to you know how hard it is to look at someone's face and your whole life working in education and then you know really want to do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, my wife's in education. My mom's in education. Right. But, yeah, I mean, some people are cut out for it and others are like... Right, and I did it so long and it was like... It mm -hmm. was more so about following everything by the book and not being able to actually get have fun with kids anymore and get to teach them the way you want to teach them. Right. No. So that was... It was, it was to buy myself some time, you know, and plan was just to keep working at the airport and then I 
good for me. Okay. So tell me about the next morning then. So now you're at home, Gannon's at home, right. Elena's at school. Tell me what happens then. Right. So this is where I need help from everybody. Yeah. Thank you for watching. The next part of this series should be right here for you, and we will see you in the next one.